Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. A recent paper from the Interventions Testing Program showed an increase in median lifespan for male mice of 12% with astaxanthin. This is of interest as so far the ITP has not seen any supplements which have been able to extend lifespan more than 10%, though they have seen larger effects up to 26% with prescription drugs such as rapamycin. Let's have a look at the write-up in more detail. The ITP tests are run simultaneously in three locations, the University of Texas, San Antonio, the University of Michigan, and the Jackson Laboratory. They also use genetically heterogeneous mice, UMHET3, rather than the genetically identical mice used in most lab experiments. The median lifespan of male mice was extended with astaxanthin by 12%, and the p-value was 0.003, well below the 0.05 cutoff and so significant. The log rank test is a way of comparing events in two cohorts to decide if they are significantly different. The ITP tests multiple interventions at the same time. In this set of tests, meclizine, an inhibitor of mTORC1 complex, saw a significant increase of 8% in median lifespan as well. The dose of astaxanthin was 1,840 parts per million. We will look at the dosing in more detail later. The intervention was started at 12 months. This is around 58 years old for a human, so within middle age. The total lifespan extension was not significant. The ITP test multiple interventions in each cohort, but none of the other interventions apart from meclizine produced any significant life extension. In this video, I will only cover astaxanthin. Both astaxanthin and meclizine only extended median lifespan in males. Astaxanthin has many effects, so this is only a very brief overview. Here is the chemical structure. It is a carotenoid, so in the same family as beta-carotene. Carotenoids often give yellow, orange, or red color to organisms such as carrots, parsnip, salmon, and flamingo. It is a potent antioxidant, a hundred times more effective than vitamin E, and has a strong safety record. Once absorbed, it enters the membranes of cells, where it acts as an antioxidant, protecting against the fats in the membranes becoming oxidized. Molecules go through the membrane and so protect both the surface and the membrane itself. Astaxanthin also enters the mitochondrial membrane, where the reactive oxygen species are generated. Animal studies have shown improved mitochondrial health and ATP production with astaxanthin supplementation. It has anti-inflammatory properties, suppressing NF-kappa-B, TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, and interleukin-1-beta. Astaxanthin is made by a common species of algae when it becomes stressed. When animals eat the algae, they will absorb the astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is the source of much that is pink colored in sea life, such as salmon, trout, shrimps, and lobsters, etc. Astaxanthin has been found at six to eight milligrams per kilogram in farmed salmon. So let's have a look at the results. As mentioned, the ITP tests are carried out at three locations at the same time. This graph shows the pooled results for male mice on a Kaplan-Meier curve, which is showing the percentage of mice in each cohort still alive at each time point. The green line is for astaxanthin. Median lifespan is when half the animals are still alive. Here we can see that for the green and blue lines, this happens later than for the red line, showing the controls. The extension for the pooled result was 12%. The improvement was across all three sites, 14% at the University of Michigan, 11% at the Jackson Lab, and 11% at the University of Texas. The lifespan extension was 6%, but this did not reach significance. Here is the same graph for the pooled females for all the interventions. Astaxanthin is again in green and is not significantly different from the controls or any of the other intervention cohorts. It's difficult to convert between mouse and human dosage. And of course, mouse data should not be used for humans, but I did want to see what the dose was that they used. 
In the paper, this is what they say about the dose. The target was 4,000 parts per million based on previous mammal studies. However, there seems to have been some issue with the manufacture of the chow, and when the lab tested it, it was only 1,840 parts per million, or 46% of the target, which raises the question of what is this in milligrams per kilogram? Here is my calculation. The number it gives me seems to be far too large, but I cannot see where I'm going wrong. Please let me know if you can. PPM is parts per million and is equivalent to milligrams per kilogram of chow. This makes sense as there is 10 to the 6 difference between milligrams and kilograms. My seat between 10 and 15 grams per 100 gram of body weight a day, so I will use 12 grams. A year old male mouse is around 40 grams. This was based on the C57 BL mouse. Putting these two together, we get that a mouse will eat about 4.8 grams of chow a day. I check this from a couple of sources and they roughly agree. I will use the actual amount of 1,840 in my calculations rather than the target 4,000. There is 1,840 milligrams in a kilogram of chow. So 4.8 grams would contain 8.8 .8 milligrams of astaxanthin. As we said, male mice weigh about 40 grams. Therefore, 8.8 .8 milligrams is about 220 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. When using allosteric conversion from mouse to human, the factor is 12.3. So this is 17.8 milligrams per kilogram for a human, which for a 75 kilogram person would be about 1.3 grams. This seems to be a very high dose. So as I said, if someone can see anything wrong with my calculation, please let me know. In a review paper that I found of astaxanthin, I saw the following doses. For mammals and birds, there were a couple of higher doses, but not as much as for my calculation. And for humans, the dose is normally five to 12 milligrams per day. Most supplements that I have seen are in this range between 2 and 12 milligrams. Here is just an appendix of sorts to this video. The paper also mentions the lifespan of the controls and compares them across the three sites. The ITP runs a cohort every year. So C2018 refers to the cohort started in 2018. Here we see that the difference in the lifespan of the controls between the sites was significant for both sexes in some cases in 2018. And also in 2019, though not in a consistent manner with the previous year. As they mentioned, the sites share procedures and make every effort to keep them consistent. I am not sure what to make of this though it does perhaps so some of the limitations in the experimental procedure. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all well, and I will speak to you again soon.